mini webinar uh, on color management and X-Rite products. Um, we've got a lot to cover today. Um, as usual, um, and as a, as a matter of information, the uh, questions can be asked at the end of the presentation uh, in the chat window. We will activate the chat window on the end of the presentation for your questions. Um, the presentation will take uh, roughly one hour um, and is done by Wolfgang Renner, which is an application specialist at x -Rite Europe. So I'm more than happy to uh, give the word to uh, Wolfgang. So Wolfgang, it's all yours. Thank you, Philip. So good morning, everybody, from my side as well and on behalf of x -Rite. So as Philip already said, we will today introduce our uh, Ivan Pro 2 color management solutions. And I will first guide you through presentations with all the uh, features. And then we'll do a slight uh, live demo of the software features. So the Ivan Pro 2 family. We introduce first the new i1 Pro 2 hardware, new features and optimizations against the uh, previous i1 generation. I will tell you something about the i1 Pro 2 downward compatibility, the IO2 measurement automation. I will introduce you the i1 profiler software with its features and its benefits. I will do a short live demo of the uh, software interface. Uh, I give you an overview to the i1 Pro 2 solutions portfolio, which is uh, the i1 Basic Pro 2, the i1 Photo Pro 2, and the i1 Publish Pro 2 with uh, certain upgrade possibilities. So let's talk first about the hardware. The hardware of the i1 Pro device is completely redesigned, has a very good agreement with the uh, original first generation i1 Pro, and essential parts in the device didn't have changed, but we made many advancements uh, to and inside this device. And by the way, its design won the uh, famous Red Dot Design Award in 2012. So, the first thing which has changed against the first generation i1 Pro 2 is its new so called XRGA factory calibration standard, which uh, will guarantee the best intermodel agreement. Intermodal agreement means um, measurement agreement between two or more different spectrophotometer models. Also, the dark current measurement on sensor to reduce the temperature drift and noise has been uh, improved against the previous model. So, what we also have built in is the new so-called sensor wavelength calibration to perform an instrument self-check on a regular basis. So, this guarantees that uh, small deviations in the measurement accuracy will immediately be corrected by the sensor wavelength calibration. And as soon as the device uh, will will run out of uh, of its uh, of its best calibration status, uh, it will it will indicate it. So in in fact, if the if the lamp core becomes weak over the years, so then uh, it will indicate it that the service will be required, and this can be also checked with this. Uh, with the center wavelength calibration. So, we have the increased accuracy and reliability. 
we have uh, removed the optics protection glass to allow better cleaning of the optics of the instrument. We have the white tile covered with a shutter to protect it against dust and dirt while you do not use it. What we also have is a auto center mechanism for best positioning to avoid any inaccurate calibrations on the wild tile. The wild tile is also much larger than the wild tile from the previous generation I1, which allows a very much better cleaning of the wild tile. And also the this assures productivity and quality results which have decreased cost of ownership. So, a very, very improved feature is the support of all the ISO 13655 measurement conditions, which are all supported by the device now. We have defined in ISO 13655 the M0 measurement condition which is given by tungsten light with a no filter condition. This is compatible to the previous generation I1 Pro 1. We have also the M2 UV cut measurement condition, which is the one with a UV cut filter in the previous generation of the I1 Pro you had to decide either if you want a I1 Pro with no filter condition according to M0 or you could also alternatively choose an I1 Pro 2 UV cut with the M2 condition. These conditions can now uh, are now included in one device and additionally we have the newly introduced M1 condition which exactly corresponds with the D50 light condition. And it is calculated out of two measurements with, uh, with, a, different, uh, with a different spectrum. So, therefore, there are two illuminants integrated within the device. The one is the uh, basic illumination with a tungsten filament lamp for the uh, M0 measurement condition. And we have also an additional UV LED within the device, which uh, provides the capability for the M1 and M2 measurements. And it also enables the device for the OBC workflow in I1 Profiler which was previously only possible with the I1 ISIS scanning device. One here you see the newly built optics in this drawing. The tungsten lamp with its spectrum. And the additional UV LED which provides the UV part of the spectrum to enable the device to provide M1 and M2 measurement conditions. So, and at least you can measure with uh, three different conditions. And if you want to measure only the M0 condition, you can scan within one pass through the scan chart. If you want to have or need to have the other two conditions, you have to scan in two passes for each line. Therefore, we have also improved the uh, tablet and the ruler. The ruler now has a, is a so-called zebra ruler with uh, visual indicators which 
always give the exact position of the device to the software. It also indicates the status of the device and guides the user through the measurement process. So the aluminium ruler is also very stable and solvent resistant. As already mentioned, it has integrated positioning detection marks, the so-called Zebra, to increase the patch detection stability. It has a full floating guide, guide rail for optimum instrument to sample distance. And also important, the minimum patch size has been reduced to 7 millimeters, and there are no more gaps required within the test shot between the single patches. So, in fact, you can get more patches on a page with the same size. Also, we have completely redesigned the display holder. New mechanical interface for very in easy instrument connectivity. The counterweight is also very easy to adjust to uh, fix the instrument on the monitor for uh, display calibration. Also, the beamer holder for the device has been redesigned. The i1 Pro 2 device is also capable to uh, profile beamers and projectors, of course. We have leveraged the new mechanical interface so far to easily connect it with all these adapters. It comes with a removable base plate to uh, allow a tripod connection as well. And it includes a parking station for the ambient light hat, which is integrated within the uh, beamer holder adapter. So, with all these improvements, we have got a very increased versatility and ease of use. We can scan, hand scan specific targets with the uh, standalone ruler. We have the measurement ambient light hat for, we can measure ambient light for the output profile creation. We can measure monitor ambient light for much more accurate monitor profile. And we can also measure spot colors with the spot measurement accessory. So, a few words regarding the downwards compatibility. The i1 Pro 2 works with existing i1 Pro 2 SDKs in so-called compatibility mode. An SDK, for your understanding, is a software development kit this is the driver kit which has to be implemented in every software that, that should support the i1 Pro device. If you now put an i1 Pro 2 device into an older software package which includes only the SDK for the previous i1 generation, so in fact the i1 Pro 2 will then be recognized as a legacy, legacy device and is usable in the same way as it would be a previous i1 Pro 1. So it works as an old i1 Pro 1 with only M0 measurement conditions. With the old SDK, the new introduced feature like the light indicator and uh, the uh, new Zebra ruler cannot be, cannot be utilized with this old SDK. And also the test charts must be the same way than it was for the old i1 Pro when you use the i1 Pro 2 with older software which was designed for the first generation i1 Pro. But anyway, it provides a very good inter instrument agreement, so there will be only very slight differences between the two instruments. 
What we also have improved is the automatic scanning table, the so-called I1-IO measurement automation table. It's newly designed with also the latest I1 black aluminium color. It ships with a new foot plate. The new table is compatible with the old I1 Pro 1 as well as with the new I1 Pro 2 devices. There is a new shutter ensurer that device is snapped correctly into the foot plate and this also helps to provide and eliminate incorrect measurements. If you are an owner of an old I1 I.O. table, so the foot plate of existing I.O. tables are exchangeable by x Right Service Center. So every older generation I1 I.O. table can be upgraded to support the old as well as the new I1 Pro instrument. Initially, the I.O. table supports the M0 measurement condition only, but uh, the M1 and M2 measurements are added in the latest release now. And M2, uh, M1, M2 scan measurement mode is expected for later, I suppose, the 1.6 upgrade. So this is how the new designed I.O. table looks like. And we go now to introduce the software. So what is I1 Profiler? I1 Profiler is a high-end profiling and profile quality assurance tool on an expert level. You can profile monitors, projectors, scanners, RGB, CMYK, and CMYK plus additional spot color output devices. The heart of the new I1 professional solutions for photo, papers, digital printing, and publishing professionals is the I1 profiler solution. In fact, it is suitable for all types of print technology, for conventional printing, digital, offset graver, flexo, inkjet, large format, photo, textile, laser printing, so for a wide variety of the uh, publishing processes. And it delivers an unprecedented level of flexibility and some unique capabilities. What are the main features? The main new feature against previous solution is the new I1 Brisson color engine for the best profiling color quality. It is the heart of the software which does all the uh, color management calculations inside the software core. It calibrates all type of monitors. It includes DDC support, which means a digital interface to enable the software to communicate with uh, monitors which support that uh, interface directly. It can profile digital projectors. We have introduced the scanner profiling in I1 Profiler. We have the uh, RGB CMYK, CMYK plus 4 color printing system with one of the later releases. Since we have released 1.5, we can also uh, create device link profiles in all combinations. We have the most flexible test chart gener generator within the software for all the specific needs. We have advanced separation and ink saving capabilities. We have a profile white point editing and we have also in, in built-in iterative output profile optimization. So you can 
finally optimize your profiles via images, via additional charts, or against specific spot colors. You can also adapt, of course, profiles to specific lighting conditions. We have built in the optical brightener compensation to compensate for optical brightener, brightener additives within uh, specific uh, papers. This was previously only possible with the ISIS instrument. We support, of course, the FOCRA media wedge verification as well as the Idealands media wedge verification according to ISO and G7. We have built in a visual output profile quality check, which is utilized with the so-called color checker proof. We can validate the monitor profile quality we have uh, redesigned the user interface so that we can operate in basic and in advanced levels. And we can finally exchange all, all our workflow components with our partners within the graphic arts workflow. So we can save, share, reuse data, settings, and assets which are, for example, uh, test chart references, measurement data, profiles, separation settings. We can all save these components within files, which we can share with our partners in the workflow. What are the main features? We support, of course, also data exchange in the so-called uh, CGATS format. So CGATS files can be used by all uh, other applications which support that data format. Of course, the i Pro 2 is calibrated against the new XRGA graphic arts calibration standard which is the calibration standard for graphic arts instruments for all x right instruments. The supported instruments of the i1 profiler software are the complete current i1 generation. It's the i1 Pro 2, it's the previous i1 Pro, it is the I.O. table, it's the redesigned new I.O. 2 table, the i1 ISIS scanning device, and it's the i1 Display Pro screen calibration device. As mentioned, we support now all of the defined ISO 13655 measurement conditions, M0, M1, and M2. We also support the color port utility as a bridge for measurement data exchange. So, for example, if you have some older measurement devices from x -Rite or Creator Macbeth in your uh, production, then you can use the color port utility to take the measurements and then export the measurement data into i Profiler to create your profiles with the new I want profile of solution. Let's have a look of the graphic interface of the software. Here we see the software operating in the basic mode. So you have uh, three options in the workflow selector, which is the display profiling, projector profiling, and printer profiling. And you have the basic uh, license and uh, version information on the right in the main screen. If you go to the printer profiling, for example, you have your test chart selection. You see whether it's an RGB or a CMYK printer. You can select your paper size. 
you can connect the device and calibrate it and you can immediately scan the uh, printer profiling test chart. The only thing you have to select when the measurement is done is your viewing light condition and in the next step you can already calculate your profile with some all with some uh, recommended basic settings and you do not have to choose uh, specific uh, professional options within the workflow as it is in the advanced mode. In the advanced mode, of course, you have much more options within the workflows so that you can much more specific adjust everything according your specific needs for your specific print or display process. You can of course not only choose from a few given test charts, you can design your patch sets, you can design your test charts, you can design or scale the patch width and the patch height. You can include more specific information into all your data. And of course you have a lot of lot more of uh, separation and profiling settings. And when the profile is finally built, you have also a preview of the uh, profile gamut, which you can view in any angle within the LAB uh, color space model. So, let's have a quick look into the software itself. I've already opened the software. So this is how the software interface looks like. On the top we have the display profiling. In the display profiling of course it supports multiple monitors. The first thing what you would like to choose is the monitor which you want to calibrate. You can choose your white point. You can choose the luminance and you can choose your contrast ratio. You can also uh, decide if you want to correct for flare, which is a specific feature to correct for, for surface effects on glossy monitors. Of course, you can enable the ambient light smart control, which, which uh, provides you to adjust the profile against your specific ambient light conditions. In the profile, <coughs> in the profile settings, you can uh, choose between different chromatic adaptation models. If you want to, uh, if you want to calibrate your monitor uh, against the specific viewing condition, you can choose between the old. ICC version 2 or the current version 4 style profile. You can select the uh, tone response curve. You can adjust the gamma and you can decide whether you want to have a table based or a matrix based profile. You can choose between different patch sets for the monitor profile, basically a small, a medium and a large one, but you can, if required, also add additional spot color to make the monitor profile more accurate for specific spot or brand colors. And you can also add you can also add specific colors which you can extract from images even. When all the presets are done, you go ahead to the uh, measurement. For the monitor measurement, you can choose between the automatic calibration. 
so-called ADC mode. This is always indicated when you have a monitor that supports uh, an BDC interface, which allows the software to communicate directly to the monitor. If your monitor doesn't have that capability, you can choose the uh, manual brightness, contrast, and RGB gain control so that you can do your adjustments directly in the monitor control. And the next step would be only to measure and calculate the profile. That's all what needs to be done for the monitor profile. In the projector profiling, the steps are basically the same. The only difference is that you have to select the projector here and not the monitor. In the printer profiling workflow, you have many more options here. You can first choose uh, for the printer profiling which type of printer you want to calibrate. You can choose between RGB printers, CMYK printers, and printers which support CMYK plus up to four additional uh, spot color channels. If you have printer drivers installed, the software will automatically recognize them and also recognize the type of printer. This Epson 1900 photo printer is a RGB printer, as you can see. So, in the printer profiling mode, you can first choose either a pre designed patch set. This is a TC918. RGB chart, for example. In the second step, you can define the layout of your patch set. You can choose the instrument first. Either you have a new i 2 or you can also work with the old i Pro, as already mentioned. You can choose do you want to print in portrait or in landscape. You can choose and define the margins. You can also increase and decrease the patch width so that you can optimize the test chart according to your specific printer and to your specific print process. Of course, you can save all these settings and you can recall it for the next profiling run. Here in the measurement tab, important, here you see all the new different measurement modes which the i1 Pro 2 is capable to measure according to. We have a spot mode measurement, which supports all the uh, measurement conditions. We have a single scan mode, where you have to scan each row in one part only for M0 measurement data only. And we have the dual scan mode to provide measurement data in M0, M1, M2, and OBC. In the next step, you can set your ambient light conditions. Of course, in pre-press, print, and photo industry, the uh, CIE Illuminant B50 is the standard uh, viewing condition. But if you want to produce according to other standards, you can, of course, also calculate your profiling according to, for example, the 65 viewing condition. In the next step, you have the profiling settings. If you calculate a profile for printing in perceptual rendering intent, you can adjust either for more uh, colorful or saturated uh, printout behavior, or 
or you can do your individual adjustments for contrast and saturation and the neutral for print out in, uh, in perceptual rendering intent. You can also optimize either quality or size in the table settings. And you have some advanced settings for the so-called chromatic adaption, if you want to create a profile according to another viewing condition. You can also choose the ICC version of the output profile. And you can also uh, adjust the profile white point, either for the uh, measure, measured white point or adjust to a custom specific white point. And in the final step, you can calculate and save the profile, of course. Let's go back to the main screen. The difference in CMYK profiling is, if you profile a CMYK printer, you have, of course, a bit more separation settings. With the separation settings, you define the uh, black point of the profile and you define also if you want to uh, apply some uh, black component replacement, gray component replacement, DCR or undercover removal. This is uh, required to adjust the profile behavior specifically according to your printing process, especially in conventional printing offsets. And it's also very important for ink saving, for example. I can show you uh, some results of a study which we have done recording uh, ink saving possibilities that you have. With, uh, that you can achieve with a specific, with specific separation settings here for the CMYK output process. So this is given in a specific document which I can show you too. But first let's finish with the uh, presentation. Because we have to have a look into the uh, I1 Pro 2 solutions portfolio. So the solutions include the I1 Basic Pro 2, which is uh, basically the hardware with its uh, accessories. It comes with the I1 Profiler software, but licensed only for monitor profiling and QA of projector profiling and printer quality assurance feature. It also comes with the Pantone color manager utility. So the basic package is mainly if you use it only for monitor profiling and for use with uh, third party web software, for example. But you can upgrade, of course, at any point from each package to the uh, high-end solutions. The second package which we provide is the i1 Photo Pro 2 package. This includes, of course, also the i1 Pro 2 hardware, the i1 Pro Filer software, included for, with licenses for monitor profiling and monitor QA, for projector profiling, for scanner profiling, for RGB printer profiling, and for printer QA. It also comes with a color checker camera raw calibration system, which includes the mini color checker, which we can see on the screen here, 
and it includes the color check approved chart and also the Pantone Color Manager utility software. And the high-end package of the portfolio is the i1 Pro Publish Pro 2 package, which includes the hardware and the software licensed for all its available features, which, which goes behind monitor, projector, and RGB printer. It also includes the scanner profiling, the CMYK, CMYK plus X printer profiling, the Vice link profiling, printer QA, color checker for camera profiling, color checker proof, and Pantone color manager. You see here the list of complementary parts, the color checker proof, which is for the printer QA. This is a very nice tool for a quick visual profile quality check under a light proof. Then the uh, color checker chart for the camera raw profiling wall workflow. It comes with the Color Checker Passport software utility and with the Color Checker Classic Mini Chart. The Pantone Color Manager is a utility software where you have all the current Pantone palettes included. So, and with this software, you can create and share your own color palettes. You can measure colors into Pantone Color Manager to evaluate the closest Pantone color to your measured color. You can extract colors from images and match it to Pantone colors. And you can bridge Pantone colors to your device. So for example, if you have created a printer profile with i1 Profiler for a CMYK printer, for example, you can uh, apply this profile in Pantone Color Manager as your output profile, and it will show you the CMYK values for your specific Pantone color for your specific CMYK output process, which you have created the profile for. So, again, a quick look in the matrix of the uh, solutions and the features that come with each solution. You see on the left the entry level solution, which is for uh, display calibration only. We have the basic, we have the Photo Pro, and we have the Publish Pro. And we have, of course, upgrade paths from basic to photo, from photo to publish, so that you can additional features at any point if required by purchasing an upgrade code. Here you see the upgrade possibilities which are given. This is, for example, uh, for the uh, basic and OEM devices, there is a full version upgrade path. And we have upgrade A path for devices that, uh, that have already licensed previous versions of X-Rite and Quaker Macbeth software. So, what are the licensing concepts? If you have some previous legacy products, for example, the previous i1 Match software, previous Profile Maker 5 software, or previous Monaco Profiler software, you can upgrade the license status in your i1 Pro. For the i1 Match product, you can upgrade the license status in your Profile Maker 5 dongle to upgrade it to the i1 Publish. And if you have a previous old Monaco Profiler dongle, you 
can get with an upgrade an additional I1 profile or dongle. So you have also the chance to have a combined software and hardware upgrade. So you can upgrade from an old I1 Pro 1 to a new I1 Pro 2 with uh, a software upgrade in, in one package. And this is the solution we see here for the different previous legacy products. And what is also important, <coughs> the licenses of your previous products are still valid when the upgrade is performed. So this is, is it from the presentation side. And I think the remaining time we should use to answer your questions and as much of them as possible in the remaining time frame. I switch over to Philip. Okay. Did you, um, by the way, did you show the example uh, for the ink saving? Oh, wasn't... it's good that you remind me just a moment. I have to open the other document. In the meantime, I'll activate the chat so that uh, people can ask questions. Yeah. Yeah, chat is open. Oh. Can you see it? Yes? Yeah. Okay, I will see. Can I do it in full screen? Yes, it's possible. So, as I mentioned before, we had to do a technical evaluation to see the capabilities of Ivan Profiler as an ink saving tool. As we know, it is the predecessor of the previous uh, profile maker and I1 Match solutions. And um, profile maker in terms of overall quality and uh, gamut mapping was always the measure. But how does this product now perform in the area specifically of gray component replacement. We raised the question, has it also improved since, since the old profile maker? And in particular, are its ink saving capabilities developed enough to go head to head with the high priced ink optimization packages? And to find this out, we decided to put I1 Profiler through a series of tests based on the methodologies used in the 2010 IPA Ink Optimization Roundup, focusing yeah. on the three areas of uh, coverage, overall ink savings, and the resulting date delta E in an IT878 uh, four color set. So, we choose to test two GCR settings. GCR means gray component replacement. So, you replace uh, amounts of uh, cyan, yellow, and magenta by black. Uh, but we still maintaining the same color separation results as strong as possible. And therefore, we have described one setting which is described as strong and another setting which has been described as extreme. So, choosing GCR settings that would be most appropriate to offset press and digital white format, respectively. So, a few overview how that looked like. So we have on top we have the original file without applying any GCR settings. So you yeah. see in the center you have the full amount of C, M, and Y, and you have only a slight black just to uh, here we have the uh, strong setting in the middle. You see the uh, amount of CMY is already reduced and we have a much more stronger black here. And the extreme setting, 
which is on the bottom, is the maximum that you can even even proceed without losing significant uh, amount of uh, image quality. Yeah. So the top one uh, I see is 300 total air area coverage, middle yes. 240, and the bottom is 220% uh, percent total area yes. coverage in CMYK. Yes, yes, yes. So it's already extremely removed, yeah. extremely reduced total in coverage. So, but uh, if you, uh, sorry, must, must go again, scroll up, when you now concentrate on the, on the uh, left part, you yeah. see the final quality of the four color print. So the uh, reduced are slightly a bit more, a bit more um, neutral, mm -hmm. but still have uh, top color quality. We can see the delta E result in the final table here. So here. You see the ink coverage and overall ink savings. And this was produced on a G740 inch test form. And you see here the area coverage. The chart shows that the Ivan Pro filer result shows significant reduction compared with the original in the left. Yep. and are comparable with the range of reduction produced by dedicated ink systems. So the other systems we have compared with, we have uh, here grayed out the names, but it will, it is a great variety of the solutions uh, available in the market. The usual suspects. Yes. And you see here, I want profile our medium GCR, and here we see the maximum GCR. And uh, we see with a, with a relatively relatively uh, low cost profiling solution, we can compare to much more ex against much more expensive solutions in the market. So here as well, change the data uh, through a graph of change in total volume. This shows how much change occurs when we compare CMYK of the original with newly separated files. And again, the comparison looks not too bad for I1 profile, as you can see. Let's have a quick look at the delta E changes, because if we reduce a remarkable amount of ink, uh, the advantage would be very relative when we have a big loss of quality. But this is not the case, as we can say here. Because here we see a much lower delta E than uh, different other applications. This is delta E total average, and this is 90 percentile. Okay. Okay. So, and as a, as a resume, I want profiler achieves achieves scores in the range of 0 0.6 average overall and 1.15 for the 90 percentile. Yes. The A ratings of one or less are far below the threshold of accuracy on large formats or offset devices. So, if you remember uh, the, the tolerance standards of ISO in offset, for example, we work with tolerances of a delta E of three in the production process. Yeah. And here we are within 1.15, and we see this is still high accuracy with a remarkable amount of ink savings if you are used to utilize the GCR settings in a proper way. But the software gives you the capabilities for this. All right. Okay. So back to the questions. We have only yes. a few minutes left, so 
So as I said, uh, chat is open. If you have questions, please uh, uh, ask them. I would stop sharing the screen, maybe, uh, unless yeah, maybe you want to show something, depending on the questions, of course. So just uh, okay. keep it open. Welcome. So I see uh, Richard might have a question. Okay. Are they unmuted? Uh, we, we don't voice them, otherwise there's too many people talking to each other. But they should pop up in the, in the chat window, any questions that are asked. Uh, okay. Well, let's give them a minute. Can you see uh, them all, Ken, the questions? I can, I can just read Richard's question. Yes, I have two i Pro 2 devices, OEM and PhotoPro. What are the upgrade costs for each? Okay, I, I don't have the... Uh, when I suppose you are in the UK, I don't have the UK price list now. I can approximately give you a guess in, in Euro. Uh, well, can you, it's better that Richard sends an email to... Uh, uh, yeah. to uh, uh, Hugo, if he, yeah. he wants uh, to have uh, an upgrade price uh, on, on, on these devices. Well, by the, the way, any, the, photo pro, the photo pro requires an upgrade A, and the yeah. uh, OEM device requires a full software license for the iPhone Pro. Yeah. Yeah. So Richard, will will uh, well, I'll just ask my colleague to get in touch with you, uh, so you don't have to uh, do that yourself. Okay. Any other questions? You're welcome. And anyway, you can you can uh, re refer to our support desk anyway if you have specific technical questions. Thank you, Mr. Hannon or Miss Hannon. Always nice to hear. Okay. So don't hesitate. Even if you have a critical question, don't hesitate. So oh, if there are no more questions, I will... Oh, there is another one. Okay, Roland, XC540. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, do you work? Do you work with standard profiles? That would be the first question I ask, and uh, go from screen to... Uh, to a standard output profiles like ISO coded, for example. Then the question is first, um, do you have a proper calibrated screen? Do you have a proper uh, setup in your, in your uh, graphic applications, like in Photoshop? Do you have soft, soft proof enabled, for example? To see the screen to print match, you need to have a, a graphic art software which is capable of uh, soft proofing, which is given in Photoshop and in some others, of course. And uh, you need to apply the proper rendering intent, and you need to have a you need to have a light proof, of course, as well to compare your printouts against the screen. Thank you, Muriel. It's great component, component removal, Kent. Yeah, removal or replacement. Yeah, so it means that you take out CM, uh, cyan, magenta, and yellow and replace it uh, with uh, black, meaning that certain mixtures of cyan, magenta, and yellow actually produce gray, so you replace that with black, which uses a lot less ink yes. than uh, doing it with CMY. Yes, if you, if you print, of course, 50 or 60 percent yellow, 60 percent magenta, 60 percent cyan, it will give some kind of neutral, which you can may replace by 30 percent black, for example. 
you're welcome. All right. So, guys, um, as always, um, you will get a follow-up email uh, to this webinar with a, um, a special promotion uh, or, or a voucher. Uh, I'm not quite sure uh, about this one, what it is. Uh, you can uh, watch it again if, if you a certain part that you would like to watch again. The webinars are available on our support website uh, so that you can watch them again. And we are looking forward to seeing all of you again next month for our next webinar. Keep an eye out uh, on the invitation. Wolfgang, I would like to thank you uh, very much. It was uh, very interesting. I enjoyed it very much. So, um, yeah, thank that's you it. Thank you from my side as well and all the attendees, of course, as well. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye.